Okay, okay. So, um, here we are, ready to get started on a new lesson tonight. Um, it's basically a repo class. Therefore, it's going to be, um, you know, something a little bit different as it is kind of usual when we're dealing with repo classes. Um, this evening, the idea is to cover relative classes and also um, some words that are related to opinions. Of course, these words are going to be more specifically known as adjectives. When we talk about adjectives, we are referring to words that we use to describe how something looks, how um, you know something can be identified or pinpointed apart from something else. Okay, so uh, so here we are once again. It's a Friday, and uh, yeah, it's a repo class. So welcome to the lesson. Um, so this evening, the reason why we're here is because on Monday there was an, an electricity outage, and we have to do the repo this evening. However, I hope you guys are you know going to be joining the lesson uh, at least little by little. And we can, of course, get it done uh, with the week. Tonight, we are wrapping up the first half of this module. So that's, you know, um, great news because we already have um, half of the classes done. So that's pretty cool. And we are also going to be talking about words that can be used as opinions, which means that they are, um, well, mostly known as adjectives. Because when we talk about um, things or we try to describe things, how something looks, how something can be um, told apart from something else, those are normally going to be known as adjectives. So those are like the main thing that we have for this evening. Um, also, relative classes or some relative classes, because yeah, we are going to be um, talking a little bit about how to use or when to use relative classes. Normally, the way in which we're going to be using them is to establish connections between two different sentences and uh, so that the sentences can, you know, have like a regular flow or uh, be a full sentence without having to, um, to like add commas or make unnecessary pauses on the sentences. So opinions and relative classes are the main thing. Now, as it is a repo class, I always try to have like a different sort of activity for tonight. If there are any questions regarding the platform, we can, of course, go ahead and try to solve them. But if, um, you know, there are no questions and, of course, if there are more people as well, we can go ahead and um, do a reading practice. When I talk about a reading practice, what I mean is basically a few paragraphs that I have gathered that we can use just so that you know we can practice a little bit of the English and um, we can see how well we might be doing in terms of our understanding what we read and the fluency by which we also read. So those are like the ideas um, for this evening. So hopefully, you know, we're going to get more people joining in because uh, the more, the better. And uh, yeah, but Before we get to that, I just wanted to also mention a little bit of what we what we have been doing. And um, yeah, in the past few weeks, we have also been trying to get some, um, you know, some extra vocabulary. We have been trying to, um, to learn about, well, new things. So mostly we have been talking about tenses. When we talk about tenses in English, what we mean by that is basically a time, like in a specific time in which something is based. In this case, of course, that something is going to mean a sentence. So a tense is basically that, the moment or um, the location in time when a sentence took place. So when we talk about perfects, I think that I have been, or I have tried to be very clear with that. When we talk about perfects, what we mean is that we're talking about something that has already been done, something that started at some point and 
is already finished. So that is for a perfect tense. When we talk about a um, continuous, what we are referring to is something that is started at that point in the time and is still going on at the moment when we are mentioning that thing. So it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit different because um, we do have them in Spanish. However, the main difference that exists between English tenses and Spanish tenses is that in English, well, or in Spanish, at least, we don't get to study them. We simply use them because we know how to use them. So there is not a, like a huge need for us to go ahead and study, um, you know, the past, present or the future in a broad way. Uh, what we do normally is simply, you know, just just be there and uh, use it whenever we have the chance or whenever we need to use them. Um, but in English, as it is a language that we are learning, we need to go ahead and talk about these tenses. So um, basically, that's, you know, like the meaning of a tense when or the time, the moment in time when you are um, doing something, when you're performing and a specific action. Uh, so yeah, that's basically about it. Now, uh, in your case, Raúl, como ahorita estamos solos, no sé si tiene alguna situación, alguna duda que quisiera aclarar antes que tengamos más gente, o no sé, alguna duda que se refiera tal vez a la plataforma, a las preguntas que hemos estado re eh, resolviendo esta semana. Hi, coach. Good evening. In my case, no, I... I don't have uh, any any question about the this this class or this platform. Uh, all fine, all fine. Okay, cool, cool, great. So, um, yeah. In the in the meantime, what we're gonna do is basically we are going to go ahead and start, you know, sharing this information because yeah, the ones who may join or if more people get to join, we're gonna be greeting them later on. So right now, this is it. I told you we were going to be talking about opinions. So here we have them. Opinions. Um, now, here, what we're going to try to do is basically see each of the words and try to put them on uh, where they fit better. So first, we have to know what do these columns mean? The first one is when something is awful. So the meaning of something awful basically is something that is not nice, you know, something that um, comes to us as a bad experience. So basically that's something awful. So when you leave a moment that is awful, um, probably it could be that um, you get an injury, you know, you were probably like riding your bike and then you fail and got an injury. So that is something awful. It's something negative. And that also affects you in a bad way. So that will be awful. Then we have wonderful. Of course, I think it's pretty well known that wonderful is used to describe things that are simply outstanding, things that um, we see and we feel amazing when we see these sort of things. So wonderful is for, you know, things that are great. So, yeah. Wonderful. Then we have stupid. So when we talk about something that is stupid, it is normally uh, understood as a reaction or something that people do that is surprising, but not in a good way. You know, something that we were not expecting to happen and ended up being like bad uh, for that person. So it's something that can give you a uh, bad reputation, maybe or something that can make you feel ashamed. So things that are stupid are normally going to be those sort of things, you know, things that uh, do not go well with you or do not go well um, with the people around you. So those are things that are stupid. And then we have strange. When we talk about things that are strange, we're going to be referring to things that um, are weird, things that you're also not expecting to happen but in this case it would be something that is surprising but surprising in a sort of a scary or spooky way so something strange can be 
something that you see and makes you wonder how did this happen? So that will be something that is strange. So we have 12 different words here and these words can be used to talk about, um, well, the specific things. So now we're gonna try to fill it up and see which of those things can fit under the column of things that are awful. Now, what do you think, Raul? So this class is basically like a private class for you. So um, something that is awful, cosas que sean así como, a ver, la palabra awful se utiliza principalmente cuando estamos hablando acerca de cosas malas, o sea, cuando algo no salió nada bien, sí. So something awful sería eso, ¿verdad? Algo um, triste, sí. Como si yo dijera, eh, that it is awful that um, the economy is, is doing so bad here in the country. So that is something awful. Así que, ¿cuál podría ser de estas 12? Primero vamos a leer las 12, sí. Las 12 palabras que tenemos. We have absurd, bizarre, disgusting, dreadful, dumb, fabulous, fantastic, horrible, marvelous, odd, outstanding, ridiculous, silly, terrible, unusual, and weird. So, what can be something that you can describe as awful? ¿Qué podría, ¿Cuál de esas palabras podríamos utilizar para describir algo que sea así, como triste o malo? For um, horrible, for example. Which one? Horrible. Oh, horrible. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's see. Horrible. One more. What else can can um be awful? Mm, terrible. Okay, terrible. Great. And uh, what else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Disgusting. Disgusting. Great. I was also actually looking at that one. Disgusting. And the last one, which one could it be? Um, marvelous. Uh, marvelous, I will not agree because marvelous is normally seen as something positive. So marvelous will be more wow. as something wonderful. See. Marvelous oh. se parecería más. Más bien, creo que podría ser um, algo así como maybe unusual. Maybe. Let me see. Uh, absurd, bizarre, no. Disgusting, dreadful. Um, oh, no, wait. I think dreadful would be the best one. Dreadful. See? Mm -hmm. That's uh -huh. dreadful because uh dreadful basically means that you are um extremely bad or extremely you know sad or when you talk about something that has basically made you lost all the happiness that you had so something dreadful is algo bastante terrible digamos básicamente dreadful vendría en ese mismo camino verdad de hablar acerca de cosas que sean terribles that's basically what dreadful can be used for so yeah dreadful Okay. Um, mm -hmm. okay, let me see. Let me go ahead and do this. I'm not sorry. Vamos a ver si funciona eso. Ya está. Ah, dang it. Ah, yes, that one. All right, so that was for awful. So in the column of awful, we have terrible, disgusting, and dreadful. Those are the main things that we have. So I'm going to basically mark them out and yeah uh which one horrible okay so oh. this ones are out now um how about something that is wonderful what can you name or what of these words can you use to describe something that you consider that is wonderful mm, fa uh, fabulous okay fabulous fantastic Fantastic. Um, outstanding. Marvelous. Ow, ow. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Marvelous. And marvelous, yes. Okay, so 
Fabulous, it's easy, right? Fabulous is very similar to the word in Spanish. Fabulous means fabuloso. Fantastic mm -hmm. is also very similar to the word in Spanish. Fantastic is fantástico. Now, outstanding, it's not necessarily similar to any word in Spanish, but outstanding means um, sorprendente. So out, mm -hmm. something that is outstanding is basically like if you were saying sur surprising. And marvelous is going to be used when you talk about things that are um, incredible, let's say. So, for example, when if, if you are a Marvel fan, if, if you have ever watched a movie by Marvel, the reason why they have that title is because of that, because they are doing things that are basically incredible. So, yeah, marvelous means that is something incredible. All right. Uh, now, how about we go ahead and talk about the the words that can be used to describe attitudes or situations that can be titled as stupid. What could you use when it comes to talking about something that is stupid? Um, ridiculous. Okay. Ridiculous. Uh, si sil uh, silly. Silly. Mm -hmm. Bizarre. Bizarre. Um, dumb. Dumb. All right. Very good. Those are the ones. So we have ridiculous. So when you talk about something that is ridiculous, the same word basically guides you towards knowing that, you know, it's not something nice. It's not something great. So something ridiculous is going to be something that uh, makes you feel sad for the other person because they are basically... Uh, making a clown of themselves. So that's going to be something ridiculous. Something silly. People that are silly are normally those who are, as we know what it means in Spanish, trying to get the attention of people or the rest of the group. So people that are silly are basically those sort of people, you know, the ones that are just um, att attention seekers, as you could call them also in English. So yeah, um, silly is that, you know, people who just, do things that are not okay, but just because they want to be seen. Then we have bizarre. Okay, in terms of bizarre, I think that bizarre can work better in a strange. In my opinion, bizarre can work better in strange because I think here, instead of bizarre, we could have used the word absurd because it goes more in the line of something that is stupid. Because when you do something that is absurd, um, basically, if you think of this word in Spanish, something that is absurdo, so, you know, it's it's following that idea. Something that uh, you wouldn't do in a regular in a regular day or in a regular basis. So absurd will work much better than bizarre. Bizarre, the reason, oh, wait, I will talk about bizarre in a bit. But absurd has that thing you know that is not positive about it and the people are just doing things like this just because as well similar as silly they just want to be seen however with silly people they are nicer so something silly can be like for example just um laughing too loud you know doing a laugher that is too loud but something absurd can be like i don't know pulling somebody's hair just because you want to be seen just because you want some attention so that's you know being absurd and now, something that is dumb is normally, well, when you do things that you're not supposed to do, um, and uh, you do them simply because um, you felt the desire of doing it. So something dumb basically is that, you know, something that um, you're not supposed to do, you should not do at all, but you still do it because you just feel like, you know, doing it. Now, um... Here in Strange, I will give you one, which is bizarre. In este caso, ya tenemos una lista, bizarre. Uh, and, well, the rest are basically also there. Bizarre, odd, unusual. Let's see, unusual and weird. So, yeah, these are the ones that we use when we talk about things that are strange. So, something strange can be bizarre. Why? Well, when you talk about something that is bizarre, you're talking about something that you don't fully understand, something that um, causes you to lose your concentration on something. So a bizarre thing can be 
any sort of distraction or anything that can distract you from an object. So that is bizarre. Um, let's say that you see some sort of um, weird object in a room and you don't understand how people use it or why would people use it. So that becomes a something bizarre to you. Algo bizarro simplemente es eso, ¿verdad? Algo que nos provoca, que, que nos llame la atención, pero que nos provoque, o sea, el querer saber, el querer conocer eso. So it's, it's strange, but still we are disconnected from the rest of the things because we want to pay attention to that. Then we have something that is odd. Odd, um, well, we use the word odd to refer to things that are out of the regular line. You know, something odd, for example, when we talk about odd numbers, see, los números impares, eso sería, por ejemplo, algo odd. Or mm -hmm. let's say that you have a column of um, red apples and then you have one green apple, that will be something odd. So it's something that is different. You know, something odd or someone who is or has something odd is uh, basically someone or something that has something different. Así que odd, básicamente se va a entender así, ¿verdad? Como algo diferente, algo extraño. O sea, la misma palabra o la misma columna ya lo, lo, lo presenta así, ¿verdad? Entonces, pero odd se va a usar cuando, eh, por ejemplo, mm, let's say that everyone has, like, uh, or everyone is, everyone is wearing a uniform at a school. Everyone is wearing a uniform and there is only one person who is not. So that is an odd person. You know, that person is the one that is different, that is uh, weird from that group. Now, unusual. When we talk about things that are unusual, we're talking about things that do not happen regularly. So things that as the same uh, word before, bizarre, can generate in us some sort of um, special attention. You know, we can like try to want to understand what it is. So unusual. That is something weird as well, something that is not common or is not regular. Then we have at the end, weird. Weird is simply um, something that steps aside from regular. So something weird is going to be um, something that disrupts the regular process or regular processes in a specific moment. So that will be something weird. Ahora, Raul, I have a challenge for you. And it is that I want you to pick one word from each column. Sí, una palabra de cada una de las columnas. And please try to write an example for each of them. As we are alone, I think we're going to take, I think, five minutes. So five minutes and try to write one sentence for each of those words. So just one word per column and a sentence for that word. Okay? So okay. Yes, you can take five minutes to do that task. Okay. Okay, great.
Okay, so um, how are we doing there, Raul? Do we have the sentences? Yes, coach. Okay, can I please hear them? Okay, uh, my example about awful. Um, the movie The Sirenita was terrible because the people didn't like the change to the original movie. Okay, yeah, good, good example. Okay, the uh, one example, uh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, the new design of Rod the Choros will be fantastic. All right, great. Hopefully, hopefully when it's finished, you know, it's going to be a fantastic inversion. So great, very good. How about uh, from the stupid? Okay, I was buying my, my new iPhone. When I didn't all the money, I was ridiculous for me. Okay, great. I was, ajá. Uh -huh. En esa, la única, el único cambio podría ser que digamos, instead of I was buying, probably trying to buy. Trying to buy, como estaba intentando ah. comprar. Ajá, uh -huh. I was ah, okay. trying to buy my new iPhone and I didn't all the, I didn't have all the money, so it was a ridiculous for me. So good, very good. Uh, oh. How about the last one? Okay. The weather in El Salvador in 2024 was unusual. Okay, good. So, yeah, it is very possible, you know, that, yeah, the weather is going to be a mess. So, good. Um, Now you have more words or, you know, more ways in which you can express your opinion about things. So, not only the ones that we have over here, but also this one's awful, wonderful, stupid, and strange. Now, stupid... It may sound for us in Spanish, it may sound like a rude word, you know, like something very bad. But in English, they use it more in a softer way. So it's not as strong as it sounds in Spanish. So in Spanish, it's way stronger than it is in than, uh, yeah, it is in English. So, yeah, it's a word that, of course, it's not funny, you know, to use it at all. But still, you can you can use it with uh, more ease than you can um with other words, like there are words that are way more harder in English, mostly the F word, that is the one that people use the most when they want to be offensive, but stupid is not as offensive. As for example, um, in other countries around here, you know, words that we use as offenses uh, are probably used just to refer to, I don't know, explain something about the person or just, uh, you know, clarify something about a specific person. So, yeah, there is no reason for us to be ashamed of using such words. Now, we're going to move a little bit into the next thing. And it is... Oh, wait, sorry. Um, let's see. There we have it. All right. So the next thing is the relative clauses. As I was saying at the beginning, relative clauses are used to establish a connection between two different sentences without using any periods, without using any commas, without anything else. What they do is basically what they are supposed to do, establish that connection or relate those two things. Now, we have four different ones that are like the basic relative classes. We have all the relative classes, like uh, the ones that are normally known as relative classes of time. Those are different and they're gonna be seen, I think they have already been covered actually, in intermediate two, I think. But the thing is that relative classes are used to um, basically mention why this person is related to this other action. So in the first thing we have, use who or that for people. That is simply to clarify, you know, so who or that. Now, we had the first example. He's an actor. He won two Oscars. So those are two separate sentences. He's an actor. He won two Oscars. So if you are trying to explain in like a very basic way, that's probably how you will do it. You know, he is an actor. He won two Oscars. He is a kid. He plays soccer. That could be another one. He is a kid. He plays soccer. Um, he's a mechanic. He fixes cars. So, you know, that's like, you know, the connection you can establish is like a person in an action 
but they are normally divided by one period in the middle. In between those two sentences, you have a period. Now, when you are um, trying to use these relative classes, the way you're going to do it is that you're going to use, depending on how the connection may be established, you can use who or you can use that. If you take recommendations, I will highly recommend that you use who because who is way more direct when you're trying to establish a connection between a person and an object. So it would be way better to say, he's an actor who won two Oscars. Okay, so he's an actor who won two Oscars. Here the thing is that you are given an explanation of who this person is. Maybe uh, before you mentioned, I don't know, George Clooney, maybe. I don't know if he has even won an Oscar, but let's say that he did. So you mentioned George Clooney, right? And you go and, and say that, yeah, George Clooney, he's an actor. He won two Oscars. But if you are trying to explain it in a more relatable way, like you're trying to make that connection between the two things, you can say he's an actor who won two Oscars. So that would mean that, you know, this is why this person is known. Básicamente eso es, ¿verdad? El hecho de mencionar eh, la persona o a alguien y por qué se conoce. Entonces, y ponemos esa rela eh, eh, cláusula de relación en medio que establece el por qué. Si yo digo, who won two Oscars, eso significa, ¿verdad? ¿Quién se ganó dos Oscars? Entonces, es eso el motivo por el cual esta persona es conocida. So, he won two Oscars. Oh, sorry, who won two Oscars? Now, you can use that. Yes, you can. You can, of course, use that. You can say he's an actor that won two Oscars. But um, in my perspective, using that is basically like referring to an object. You know, you're not necessarily talking about a person. You're more like referring to an object, which is the second example that we have or the second column over here. Um, we use wish or that for things. And here, I will feel way more comfortable using that. So, two sentences that we have are, it's a movie. It stars Kate Winslet. Uh, Winslet. It's a movie. It stars Kate Winslet. So, here we have an object and we have a person, you may say. But in this case, it works as an object as well because the person is simply receiving the action. So, it's a movie. It stars Kate Winslet. And when you're trying to explain this movie, when probably you are... um searching to like what to watch and you remember this movie, you thought about this movie, but you don't remember the title for it, you can say something like this. It's a movie which stars Kate Winslet. I don't remember the title for the movie, but I'm sure that, you know, in that movie, you can see her. So it is different um, using the persons or, you know, using relative classes with people than with things, because with people, you have had to have mentioned the person before. O sea, ya debiste haber mencionado a la persona para que tenga sentido. En cambio, con las cosas, no necesariamente. O sea, puede ser que estemos discutiendo acerca de esto, ¿verdad? De la película. Y de ahí, no, te, no es necesario, o sea, ni cambiarle nada, ni decir nada diferente, sino que ya, o sea, solo introducimos y digo, ¿verdad? Esto. It's a movie that stars, or uh, which stars Kate Winslet. Ahí también depende. Um, más recomendable o más fácil el utilizar el that es mucho más sencillo it's a movie that stars Kate Winslet um, very rarely you're going to see people using wish it is very weird that you see people using wish but still you know it's something that it depends on how you get used to this and how you like to use it but yeah relative classes are not complicated what they do is simply that they establish a connection between one thing and the other, or they establish a connection between one person and one action. Nothing different, nothing harder. So basically, that's it. Um, any questions regarding this, Raul? I think that is easy to use that um, a difference uh, that uh, who and which. Yeah, that's right. You know, because that sounds more like direct. So, yeah, it sounds more like a straightforward. And it is also possible to use it in both occasions. 
So it is easier to use that uh, mm -hmm. because when you use who, you need to remember that you're talking about a person and it's like, yeah, it's a person. So I have to use who. If it is a thing, you need to remember that it is a thing. So you have to use which. So um, seeing it from that, from that point of view, of course, it is way, way easier um, to use that instead of either of the other two so yeah great very good okay now i have something where you are going to have to participate a lot which is the reading practices see ¿Sí? tengo un par de párrafos acá que vamos a estar practicando en este momento y vamos a empezar con el más sencillo this one is easy this one only has four lines so it's not complicated at all but we're going to start, you know, making it a little bit more fun from this point on. So the first one is about Shin Jun's emergency. Now, the magic here is that you are going to read it first, and then we're going to, like, look at it together. So when you feel ready, you may start reading this short paragraph, please. Okay. Shin Jun is a construction worker. One day at work, he drops a block on his foot. He can't move his foot. He thinks it's broken. His friend calls 911. An ambulance takes him to a hospital. Okay, very easy, right? It's not complicated at all. Like, yeah, we simply, maybe the most complicated part was the name, Shin Hoon, but the rest, or Shin Yun, I think. But the rest is easy. So yeah, it's a construction worker one day, at work, he dropped a block on his foot. So yeah, those blocks can be really, really heavy. Uh, and they can, of course, hurt your feet. Uh, and he can move his foot. He thinks it's broken. His friend calls 911. An ambulance takes him to a hospital. So very good. And this section here, I like the way how you read it because yeah, it is supposed to be 911. If you say number by number, it is way easier for people to understand it. However, if you were to say, for example, 9-11, that can make it complicated for some people. Mostly, if you're talking about kids, um, kids are going to have a harder time trying to understand what you mean. So 9-1-1 is always going to be the perfect way. All right. So let's okay. see the second one. The second one is a little bit longer. And this one is about Mrs. Kennedy. So Mrs. Kennedy, can you please read it, um, Raul? Okay. Mr. Kennedy is the school principal. Uh, so, uh, oh. She has a good job. She isn't married. She is widow, widow, uh, widow. widow. Mm -hmm. Okay. She has two sons and one daughter. She, uh, her son, Eric, is single. Her son, Brian, is married. Brian doesn't have children. Her daughter, Veronica, is married. Veronica has two children. Jessica is Miss, Miss Kennedy's gra uh, granddaughter. Her, her grandson's name is Ben. Miss, uh, Miss Kennedy doesn't have any brothers. She has two sisters. Okay, good. Very good. Now, uh, one thing. Esa palabrita vi que se nos complicó. Esta palabra simplemente la podríamos decir de esta forma. Aquí la voy a escribir. Daughter. Ah, sí. Daughter. daughter. Sí. Daughter. Cuando hablemos acerca de la hija, you can simply say daughter y ya eso es todo. Sí. Daughter. Porque sí, o sea, es complicadísima. Cómo se escribe, ¿verdad? A cómo se va a pronunciar. Pero sí, daughter. Ahora, eh, granddaughter, aquí por ejemplo. Y la otra. Esta de acá es mm. Mrs. Sí, ah. Mrs. Porque si decimos solo Miss, Miss se utiliza con, para referirnos a señoritas, o sea, a mujeres que no están casadas. So that would be Miss. In this case, it would be Mrs. Y es complicada porque tiene una R, o sea, y para uno es como, ¿por qué está esa R ahí va? Pero es Mrs. Sí, Mrs. Kennedy. Um, so yeah, Mrs. Kennedy is a school principal. Uh, ¿Esta palabra sabemos qué significa principal? Mm. Uh, similar a uh, university? Uh, not really. Principal is como el español tenemos el director. So ah, yes. A ah, principal, okay. a principal in a school 
is going to be, uh, as we will say in Spanish, the director. Sí, en español sería director, en inglés se dice principal. Um, okay. Otra de esas palabras, por ejemplo, que a veces pueden ser confusas, mejor aquí arriba lo voy a poner, es para decir alcalde, sí. Porque para alcalde sería mayor, pero así, con J. Porque también se puede utilizar este, mayor. Pero uh -huh. este mayor es para la universidad. O sea, por ejemplo, si tú le preguntas a alguien como, ¿qué estás estudiando? En inglés difícilmente van a preguntar, uh, what do you study? O sea, es difícil, difícil, difícil. Porque cuando le preguntes algo hacia alguien, what do you study? They're going to tell you the institution. So normally they're going to say, for example, if you ask, what do you study? They're going to say, oh, high school. I study high school. Así entienden ellos esto de la, del, del what do you study. No lo entienden como nosotros, ¿verdad? Que preguntamos, ¿qué estudias? Y ya de una, ah, profesorado o qué sé yo, derecho, leyes. Y laboratorio, o sea, cada quien, ¿verdad? Con lo suyo. En cambio, en inglés, la pregunta para saber qué estudia alguien es What are you majoring on? Sí. Ahora lo, lo voy a escribir acá. What are you majoring? Si simplemente dices majoring, se puede, se puede utilizar también. What are you majoring? Sí. Y eso significa que estás como dominando, digamos. What are you, oh, here we have it, sorry, like this era, ajá, así era, esta es, perdón. What are you majoring? O sea, ¿qué estás mm, dominando? Básicamente, eso sería lo que vamos a entender, ¿verdad? What are you majoring? A pesar de con J para la universidad y con Y para el alcalde. Pero, esa sería la pregunta. What are you majoring? En lugar de preguntarle, what do you study? Porque si le preguntas eso, te van a decir, oh, I study at the university, o the university. Entonces, ¿Cómo entienden eso de preguntarles qué estudias? I don't know. That's something that I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's the best way to go about it. If you want to know what someone is actually, you know, the classes they're taking, you have to say something like, what are you majoring? Y, bueno, como decía antes, entonces, aquí ya corrigiendo, uh, this word, this one over here, is the one you're going to use to talk about an alcalde. Sí, mayor. So, yeah. Ahora, um, lo digo porque, por ejemplo, para cuando hablamos de esto, de principal, normalmente vamos a decir principal's office para hablar acerca de la dirección. La tan conocida dirección aquí en las escuelas, ¿verdad? Entonces, así va, va a conocerse. Y se me vino a la mente lo del mayor por eso mismo, porque cuando hablamos del mayor's office, hablamos de la oficina del alcalde, pero en muchos casos, en muchos mapas de, del inglés viejito, digamos, este nombre se le daba a las alcaldías también. Decías mayor's office and it's understood as an alcaldía. Now, in the, like the current English, we're going to say the city hall. Sí. Nowadays, it's more uh, known as a city hall. But back in the day, it was very known as the mayor's office. Así que eso es algo importante también, ¿verdad? Que antes se conocía como el mayor's office, but now it's simply the city hall. Sí. Hoy es como más común que se diga City Hall, pero todavía hay personas que puedan decir, I'm going to the mayor's office. Así que para entender, el mayor's office se va a entender como eh, la alcaldía. Sí. All right. So, uh, let's see. Uh, ya no llegamos. Bueno, anyway. Um, so, yeah. Principal then means director. Uh, she has a good job. She is in merit. She is widowed. Esto de acá, widowed. When we talk about widowed, eso significa que está o se ha quedado viuda. Sí. Uh -huh. Widowed. Widowed means that she doesn't have a husband anymore. So she lost her husband. So yeah, she has two sons and one daughter. I told you, right? Daughter. It's easier to say daughter than, than any other way. Um, her son Eric is single. So simple. Her son Brian is married. Brian doesn't have children. Ahora, aquí, por ejemplo, esto está muy bien así. Brian doesn't have children. Pero algunas personas a veces hacen esto simplemente para agregarle mayor sentido o mayor fuerza al hecho de que esta persona no tiene hijos. Entonces, si tú dices, Brian doesn't have any children, it will mean that, you know, that, that he doesn't have children like at all. Like he doesn't even want to have children. So, yeah, people will understand um, Brian doesn't have children as... Uh, you know, the idea that, that he basically lives only with his couple. But if you say Brian doesn't have any children, it means that 
it's basically something hard for him. Maybe, you know, it could be that it's referring to a hard situation for Brian. Anyway, then we have her daughter, Veronica, is married. Veronica has two children. Jessica is Mrs. And here, um, as I said it before, Mrs. Kennedy's granddaughter. So here we also have one of those possessives. Sí, tenemos uno de los posesivos, ¿verdad? Comunes del inglés. Mrs. Kennedy's granddaughter. Her grandson's name is Ben. So very easy. Her grandson's name is Ben. Uh, and then we have Mrs. Kennedy doesn't have any brothers. She has two sisters. So very easy, not complicated at all. Now, let's see the last one. Este sí es un poquito más largo, solo que este ya no tiene tantas comas y tantos puntos como antes. So yeah, this is the last one and it's titled Sharing Responsibilities. So let's see how we do with this one. I am going to take away this just for a minute. So yeah, you can start whenever you feel ready. Okay. Um, in today's society, the role men play is different from in years past. Before, men worked at jobs to earn money and women stayed home to take care of the children. Now, many women have jobs and work outside of the home. These women do not have time to do all of the housework. Usually, their husbands help them at home. In the United States today, couples share the chores and responsibilities at home. Often meant to many of the chores that women did before. Men do the dishes, they do the laundry, they make dinner, and they clean the house. Men also spend more time taking care of the children than before. There is no su such thing uh, as men's work and women's work anymore. Now it's all just work. All right. Very good. Great. Very, very well done. Uh, so, yeah, we were following a nice pace. You were doing very, very good. And uh, as you said, simply it starts by saying in today's society, the role men play in different form, uh, is different from in years past. Before, men work at jobs to earn money. And esta es la única palabrita. Aquí, esta, cuando la tenemos en plural, la pronunciamos women. Sí, ah, okay. women. Esa es la única diferencia. Cuando es plural, o sea, la diferencia, esta es complicada. Y no voy a decir que, o sea, que es fácil porque a mí me costó bastante. Yo antes simple, siempre decía men, aunque estuviera con A, en el caso de, para el singular, ¿verdad? En hombres, yo decía men, sí. Y cuando quería decir el plural, yo le agregaba la S, como la típica en español, yo decía mens. Pero eso no se puede. Man es el singular y men es el plural. Entonces, para las mujeres serían woman para singular y women para el plural, sí, sería women, so um, to earn money and women stay home to take care of the children, so that's easy, right uh, now many women have jobs and work outside of the home, these women do not have time to do all of the housework, aquí está otra de las palabras que pues es una palabra compuesta pero que nos ayuda más o menos a entender verdad a qué se refiere el párrafo sí, all of the housework, basically it's talking about, well all the things that um, someone is supposed to do, you know, in the house. So, yeah. Uh, then we have, usually, their husbands help them at home. So, this is something that, of course, has been happening in the last few years. This is not something that has been happening for a long time. It is relatively new. So, yeah, it's not, you know, that um, men have been doing uh, housework for a long, long time before. Anyway, moving on. In the United States today, couples share the chores. Sí, perdón, eso está mal, mal dicho por mi parte. Se diría chores, sí, chores. Porque si yo digo chores, sí, chores se refiere a como las bahías o la orilla del mar. Sí, esos serían los chores. En este caso es chores. Uh, so yeah, couples share the chores and responsibilities at home. Very easy, right? Often... Men do many of the chores that women did before. Men do the dishes. Aquí estamos ya hablando específicamente de los, de los que serían los chores, que son como los trabajos de la casa, ¿verdad? So, men do the dishes. It means that, uh, yeah, you basically clean um, the china. Es una cosa rara 
de hecho, en inglés, que, por ejemplo, cuando hablamos de porcelana, eh, no, se, no se utiliza. Like, uh, it is very, very weird that you get to use the word, um, like, porcelain or anything like that. Lo que utilizamos para hablar acerca de las vajillas o la, como los trastes importantes de la casa es la palabra china. Así que de esa forma se refiere, ¿verdad? A, a hablar acerca de los, los platos o um, vasos que sean de vidrio o de porcelana se van a conocer como china. So yeah, men do the dishes. Um, they do the laundry. This is another thing. They do the laundry. Um, so yeah. Esto se refiere pues al el lavado, ¿verdad? Así que ellos hacen eh, pues las lavadas o lavan la ropa. So they do the laundry. They make dinner. This is another important short. Now, the reason why dinner is mentioned is because uh, nowadays in the U.S., breakfast and lunch are not important. Like in a regular, like in a day-to-day -day life, um, breakfast and lunch are not that important, not for the family at least. Because it is very hard to see families eating breakfast or lunch together. Because uh, let's say that they have kids at home. So um, the parents may leave and go to work at six. And the um, the kids live around eight in the morning. So it's like, you know, they all have like different schedules. So it's very hard for them to have uh, um, breakfast together. So that's the first one. And for lunch, well, um, parents are at work and kids are at school. So it's going to be also very hard that they can like be, you know, in the same place to um, to have lunch together. So dinner is basically like the last moment uh, when or when they have the chance to like eat together. Now, and that is also the reason why um, el comedor que nosotros conocemos, in English you say dining room. Because it is normally used when you're eating dinner. Sí, entonces es otra, otra cosa importante. ¿eh? That's basically why for us it's comedor because we, we have it like, or we, we can eat at almost any moment um, with the family. But in English, the most important time or the most important meal is going to be dinner because that's the only one when you have like the chance to be with the family. So yeah, that's why we have the dining room. Now, um, the last one, they can clean the house. Of course, you know, It's it's like the most important part of the shores. And then we also have men also spend more time taking care of children than before. This is also something new. And there is no such thing as men's work or women's work anymore. Esta es la única forma en la que se puede utilizar esto. El decir men's sería cuando hablamos acerca del posesivo, ¿verdad? O sea, trabajo de hombre, men's work, y women's work, trabajo de mujeres. So, serían los únicos momentos en los que se les puede agregar ese cuando estamos agregando los posesivos ahí. So yeah, there is not such a thing as men's work or women's work anymore. Now it's all just work. Así que bueno, esa sería, esa es la lectura que teníamos para hoy. Y pues, um, yeah, basically that will be it. That's uh, all that we have uh, to share today. So all I have left to do is basically thank you very much, Raúl, for being here. And thank you for, uh, for the practice. Also, thank you, Ever, for logging in. It was a little bit late, but still, you know, uh, you got here. So, uh, thank you very much. I hope I'll see you Monday. Hopefully this time, you know, it's going to work on the schedule the next week. So, yeah. Bye-bye for now and see you next Monday. Thank you, coach. You're very Good welcome. Night. Okay. Bye-bye.